Echo, one of the newest hotspots of London. In Zone 2, south of the river, and within easy reach of the city's main employment centers. Being home to some of the most ethnically diverse communities in the UK, Peckham has long been associated with a down at hill look and a high rate of gun crime. After Bohemians and young entrepreneurs took advantage of its off-radar status over the years, Peckham finally managed to get over its bad reputation. Pop-up galleries, cafes and nightclubs created a laid-back and attractive atmosphere as well as an incredible community spirit. As the neighborhood started to redevelop itself naturally, Peckham's reputation moved on to be the up-and-coming area of the southeast London. Rye Lane, the busiest commercial street, has a remarkable cluster of Art Deco buildings that made it South London's premier shopping destination in the 1930s. Now, one of those historic buildings plays the most important role in the regeneration project of Peckham, the train station, that still retains its futures from 1860. There is a £25 million budget for rebuilding the station site with the collaboration of Network Rail, Southern Railways and Southwark Council. While the area will get a facelift, the future remains unknown for some small businesses. Adam Mizu opened his barber's shop in the station area a few weeks ago, but could be forced to sell his business within months. I'm afraid of my future because it's my first business. I spent a lot of money the first year or six months you don't make any money. So, you know, it's a hard time, very hard time for me. And they, we, they're not confirmed yet. They're gonna knock down this building or they keep it. They got a lot of proposals. Let's see, let's see. Not every business owner will experience the change in the same way. At the far end of Rye Lane, Sheniz Mulali, running her dry cleaners shop with her husband for 25 years, believes that improvement is necessary. In terms of footfall and um, obviously the amount of people that it would attract more, it will obviously be beneficial to our business, I hope. We may need to sacrifice something so that we can have an improved area and it may be that some old buildings may have to be demolished to, to build new ones in their places. Don't agree with all um, old buildings going, but some of them have to. They do it anyway with the residential properties that are their old buildings. They knock them down and build more flats in their places, like old houses. Uh, maybe we need to do that with the with the shops as well, but um, obviously m not, you know, brutally. Of course, regeneration isn't just about businesses. Renato Satic, the manager of the organics shop on the same street, is concerned about how increasing property prices can change the area. So every changing could be scary. And not good, but every changing could be good. So it basically depends on, on the people, depends on the council, depends on us, what we want to do, or how we want to change. So we opened this shop, we changed the area a bit, for, for sure. And uh, But I can see maybe in every month a new shop is opening somewhere around here. So definitely there is a big changing, but I can see some people say that it's not good, Peckham losing its soul because there is a big risk of losing the heart of the area by building up new shops and the prices are going up, renting is going up, up. People need to move from here, which, which happened in Shoreditch, uh, Dalston or Hackney. Although this is the only organic shop so far in Peckham, this doesn't mean it's the only organics presence in the town, as we have the Bussy building here standing for organic regeneration. Named after the Victorian industrialist and entrepreneur George Bussey, who manufactured sporting goods, the Bussey building became the iconic spot of Peckham. Once just an old warehouse scheduled for demolition and replaced by a tram depot, the building is transformed into a multi-story hub for music, theater, community events, artist studios, and creative enterprises. I think it naturally happens, that, that's what we've been doing on this site. We aren't, you don't need to spend millions and millions of pounds to make something look really nice and most likely then you're going to destroy all the businesses and atmosphere that's there because they will be priced out. 
Um, we're not doing that here. We are just sort of slowly building it up organically. Um, when we don't have the money to, you know, fit, fit all the new uh, heater systems that we'd need for the busy building or the new windows or make a new lift straight, you know, we don't, we're slowly organically doing that. Um, and I think that's kind of what's an attractive um, factor in people taking the space because they know that it is affordable at the moment and we are trying to slowly kind of improve the space. Almost 10 years ago, Council plans to build a tram depot by designating a large area, including the whole of Rye Lane, triggered a community action. Eileen Kohn, who has lived in the area for more than 30 years, created the resident-led local community consortium. Peckham Vision. The process was not always going smoothly, and the residents worked a lot to overcome the lack of communication from the local authority. I think that right across the country in the UK there's a recognition that places are much better if people work together across all the different interests, especially around town centres. <coughs> and so we're very disappointed because we've been doing that for a long time and the authority hasn't cooperated with us at all. So we haven't made a lot of progress, so we are still making progress. And Peckham is one of the largest places in London for religious groups, Christians and Muslims. And thousands of people have a big slice of their life, personal life, in and around Peckham Town Centre to do with religious groups. And they're obviously part of the local economy as well, and many of them are part of the local community. So there's a sector that is not integrated mm. adequately to what we're all doing in Peckham Town Centre. I'm really keen on doing something about that. Um, then there's the artists' community. And the, and the sort of things that spin off that, which are different from some of the other economic communities in the town centre. And it would all be much, much better if we had a, 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 a sort of more structured way of learning about each other, uh, which is what we've been working on. The plans have changed rapidly over the years, and presently it came down to the reconstruction of the area around Peckham Rice Station. Clyde Watson who also lived in the area for three decades, explains the Southern Council's co-design process from the residents' point of view. The project's been going for, well, in formal terms, three years. In for informal Well, we got the money for the yeah, square. It's, it's been was around for August 2011, so... Um, three but ideas years. have been floating around ten years. for a long ten years. time. And the project has got smaller and smaller and mm -hmm. smaller in scope. It was going to be about all the holdings by Network Rail and in the end everybody, either people opted out or Network Rail decided it was too much problem and in the end it's now the space in front of the station. The council introduced, because there were so many problems initially with how to relate to the public and communicate and um, it was decided to introduce a co-design process and this was thought by everybody to be a, you know, the key to community collaboration. I think there's something fundamentally flawed about the whole concept of co-design. People often think it's where everybody sits around as Eileen says we have truly collaborative conversations but in fact even I, I don't I have severe doubts as to whether that is a an appropriate aspiration anyway. We're going to find out in the next few weeks how successful it is. I suspect it's not but um, there will be huge lessons to learn from this I'm quite sure. The co-design workshops of the Station Square are still on the way, but the property prices are already going up. This might be the last month that Peckham is seen like this. The change is on its face, and it all comes down to the question, will Peckham be able to protect its soul?